Hey everyone, Sophia here from migratechallenge.blogspot.com. As promised, I am back with another small organization project. Today I am tackling my pantry that is just right outside of my kitchen. It's basically two tall cabinets and two short ones that are all the way above. That pantry I set up about two and a half to three years ago and never touched it again. So you can only imagine the disaster that's in there. I am pretty sure I have a gazillion items that are completely expired that need to get out the door and I also have shoes in my pantry yes shoes you may wonder why does Sophia keep shoes in a pantry well it's very simple what happened is that I have two separate cabinets, one of them having drawers. We never really use this because we don't really keep that many dry goods. Not because I don't cook, it's just that I don't need that many dry goods. I tend to buy stuff in smaller containers only because I've learned through experience that if I buy in bulk and if I buy large containers, let's say of flour, or rice or whatever, it ends up um, getting bad over time and I have to toss it. So when I purchase, I purchase in smaller quantities just what we need for the month, two months, maybe three months at best, but that is it. Anything after that, I know it's going to turn bad in my pantry. So that particular closet, which is completely separated from the other side of the pantry, has shoes in it because this is the entryway from the back door. We didn't know where to put the shoes. I got tired of seeing the shoes on the floor. We were tripping on them all the time and out of bad habits, I decided, you know what, rather than us learning a new way of taking care of the shoes why not just keep them right there since that's where we take off our shoes you open the pantry slide the drawer and everybody had a sliding drawer to put their shoes on well that was kind of functional for a while let's say maybe a year or two years at best but for the past year since I've been monitoring the whole system we're not using this at all either so I might as well just discard all the shoes put them somewhere else and restore the pantry the way it was meant to be and just just like I did with my casual dishware and drinkware video which you can find down below on my channel as well all I have to do really is empty out everything just make a thorough assessment of what I need to keep what I need to donate because I'm sure there's dishes in there I don't know why but I have a hunch that I'm sure I'm gonna find dishes somewhere in there Figure out if I want to keep it, donate it, and then everything else. Check out the labels, if it's expired, if it's been open, and it's been open for a long time, because I have a kind of a good idea of when is the last time I used something in there. Then I have to just discard it, period. Reorganize the whole thing. I am not spending a dime today not at all if I need containers I'm gonna go around the house and find containers because I'm sure I have a plethora of containers that I can use for my pantry I don't need to go to the store and go spend oodles of dollars that I do not have right now to try to make my pantry look some kind of fancy because the reality is it's a pantry I don't need my pantry to look fancy let's go right downstairs and let's get started entryway also known as the pantry when you walk in from the outside you go this way and then the kitchen is right there with the sliding door over here which actually I'm going to close um, this is the pantry I'm talking about so as I said there's two closets that are all the way on the top here and two at the bottom so just like I did with the other video I'm going to show you close-ups but right now I just want to give you a long shot so you get an idea of what's in there so there's actually I knew it there's dishes <laughs> Uh, so there's actually dry goods in there. This is pretty, pretty deep. I'd say it's about two and a half feet deep. So there's a lot of stuff that you can stash in those uh, cupboards. But the problem is that because they are so deep, you actually do need to have a stool to get to, let's say, the bottom of the one that's all the way on top. Unless you keep stuff in basket, which is pretty much what I've been trying to do. When you go at the bottom here, this closet right here actually has a lot of items that are food items. And here are the shoes. You see what I'm talking about? So, yeah, they are on sliding drawers. So I'm going to take the camera and give you a close-up real quick and start the whole cleaning out of this pantry. All right, so here we go. Um, this is the top left cupboard. I'm pretty certain that's what's in there is mostly, uh, okay. 
I thought it was going to be, I can't see what's in the back, so I'll have to get the stool. Uh, but I thought this was going to be mostly baking, but you can tell I really, really visit my pantry often, right? I have no idea what's in it. Uh, yeah, this is baking and other items. So there once was a attempt at keeping stuff organized. You see the little labels. There's more containers there. Same thing here, this containers and more stuff in the back. Not sure what's in it. Um, here I have some plastic containers from the deli. There's some soup cans. Here there's more soup cans. There's two empty containers. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's empty. There's some cookies there, more soup, some pumpkin puree. I'm glad I found it because I was going to buy some for the dogs. There's some rice here and I don't know what's in the back. And a box of, I don't know, with weights. Yeah, I told you it was pitiful. I have a dish that I'm probably going to, oh, with more plates. Look at that. More dishes. Yay. Um, obviously. So there's some... Um, what is that? Kiwi protector for suede. All right, so that's a um, water repellent for shoes. Containers all in the back. I can tell there's some food in there, but it's probably bad. More dishes and cornmeal and a stash of candy. The kids don't even know exist. Look at that. Okay, so I have to empty out all this. There's a container here that says sweet Korean rice. I'm shaking it. There's nothing in it. There's this thing here. I don't know what it is. I don't know what this is. Um, well, whatever. And then here are shoes that we have stacked in there and a basket of whatever. Um, this is awfully embarrassing. What I'm going to do is empty out everything. I'm just going to empty everything, put it in the kitchen and just clean out everything with bleach, obviously, because if I'm going to use those again, that's got to be seriously cleaned out and disinfected. So you see, I promised that the pantry was going to be appalling and it really is. I'm telling you, I can't find a hole big enough right now to go hide into because this is just like pathetic. Like what pantry looks like this except mine, really? If your pantry looks like this, comment down below, let me know. Please don't make me feel like I'm just by myself in this situation. I know that some of you have absolutely amazing pantries with everything on hand. It's not my case, obviously. So if I make some room and I have the right control containers and the right placement for items, I'm probably going to improve on the content overall of the pantry, but right now the way it is, no wonder I don't want to cook dinner at night because who wants to go in there and try to find anything really? It's pathetic. It's embarrassing and it's pathetic. Let me empty out this entire thing, clean it out, and then I'll show it to you emptied and disinfected so we can put stuff back in. entirely emptied and washed and by washed I mean bleached <laughs> this is like if there was any bacteria left in there it's gone all the drawers have been super super clean um, the shelves are clean everything is still um, a little wet so I'm gonna have to wait for it to dry or I could just take paper towels and go for it um, so now I have to think about placement what do I want to have easy access to obviously the cereals are gonna have to go somewhere in there we don't have a lot so I don't need to have it on the sliding thing 
containers that I've been keeping already pre-labeled can go on there. I just got to figure out where I'm going to put things on these because they are so deep. And if you can see, this one is actually deeper than this one. This one is a good two and a half feet. This one is probably just a foot and a half deep, uh, probably because it's like all the pipes or whatever in the back of it. But otherwise, this is a huge pantry, you guys. I mean, really, it's big. So now let me show you the disaster that's in the kitchen because, of course, you know, you can't clean one area without making the other area dirty. This is all the stuff that was in there. Um, that's just a bunch of shelves that was on the left side, I think. And this is everything that was on the top that's been removed. Um, the dishes, again, these I'm donating. I don't need to keep them. And then there's more stuff here. So let me just do an inventory of what I need. I'm going to start with the shelf that's here. Not this one, but this one. Because this is tall enough for me to put plastic containers for dry goods like rice and flour, things like this. So I'm going to see how I can manage this and whether or not I need to transfer to the top shelf. So here's my first sliding drawer and I did manage to put all of my large containers that were kind of like for baking. So I have, and I've, these are my old labels, but I've labeled them on the top. I just wrote on top of the container. I mean, I don't plan on buying containers. These, by the way, I believe I purchased at the dollar store. So just to let you know, you don't have to go to the container store and purchase $200 worth of containers to put your vanilla sugar. I mean, really, this does the job. It's the same thing. Granulated white sugar, I have white flour, brown sugar, cane sugar, confectioner's sugar, vanilla sugar, and this is cornstarch in an unassorted uh, container. Who cares? So this is done. I need to label it here in the front. Um, I'm probably going to put sugar and flour you know, as a label. I'm ready to move on to the next one. This one here, I'm going to put all of the rice and the couscous and things like this. Okay, drawer number two. I was only able to fit three of these that are a little bit different than those. Um, I have one for rice, one for quinoa, and one for lentils. This one is empty, so obviously I got to go back to the store and purchase some more. I had two more of those containers that have always been empty. I have absolutely no use for them because we really you know, don't need anything else. So what I did is that I put them in the back here to kind of force myself to bring things forward um, because I don't want to have to climb to get stuff. I just, this pantry is not ever going to be filled anyway. So I'd rather keep things in the front and have those boxes there to just stop me from putting and stashing things. So just have like some um, common basic progressive soups, um, the Classico, tomato sauce. I wish I had the room to put it here. I'm not sure if I can. not now. I can't move the drawer down. That's too bad. Um, because I wanted to have kind of like all of the tomato sauce and the pastas here. But that particular Classico one right here does not fit, you see. And I don't want to move everything. See, uh, hold on. Let me see if maybe I can move that. I don't even know how that works. I would have to disassemble the whole thing and try to figure out on my own. All right, let me see if I can move this down a little bit because there's a big empty space right here and that bothers me. So it took a while, but I did manage to lower the drawer. So now I can have the tomato sauce on top here with my pasta. So small victory. It wasn't that complicated. Um, I did have to drill holes in the back because this level here was not allowing me in the back to put the screw in anyways. Not that complicated, but I figured it out relatively fast and was able to do it, I don't know, in 10 minutes. So I have room for this, which is good. And then again, the rice and quinoa and all of that is there. So moving right along, what can I put here and on the other shelves? Okay, so who's ready for a final reveal? Here it is. It took an hour and 15 minutes, actually a little bit more, almost an hour and 30 minutes. And I have the entire pantry organized and label. Not only that, I have extra space that I'm sure I'll figure out a way to put things into it. I have those two shelves here that are completely empty and I have this one here that's always empty and then this one only have a few things and that's it. So how did I organize this? Well I have the cake mixes here because we do um, make a lot of those. You know the kids like to have cupcakes and brownies things like this so the cake mixes are there this is soups and miscellaneous um i had to use one of those containers that was in the back so i put the other one lengthway rather than uh, the other way around so i'm still trying to not put anything in the back here i have all of the cereals 
So I have the um, oatmeal, instant kind, and then the ones that you have to cook a little bit, and the regular cereals in there. You can tell we like our cereals. This is just basically canned goods, so I don't have a lot of it, but this cranberry sauce, and then this uh, anchovies, and these are herrings, you know, regular canned stuff. Here on the side, I have the little um, cupcake holders cup thing that I use all the time when I make cupcakes. On this shelf right here, underneath the canned goods, I have the cookies. So right now it's just two boxes and a bag, a Ziploc bag of Oreos, which I've consolidated into there because I didn't need to have the empty um, container or half empty one. Again, these are empty. And then on the right side here, these are the stuff that you can actually, these are really good. You go to the deli section of your supermarket and you ask them for the big soup containers with the lids and they will gladly give you a whole bunch of them. So these are great if I have leftovers or things like this. Couscous is here. I have two large bags, so might as well just have some container because we do cook a lot of that. Um, miscellaneous, this is just like a um, Vaza crisp. Miscellaneous again with some pancakes. So these are the uh, Bisquick mix. Uh, I believe that one of them is a uh, sugar-free and then the other one is regular, the Jiffy cornbread and then cornmeal right next to it. Again, the pasta sauce and the pasta, you've seen that. So I have that in the basket right here, a little leftover pasta, which I've, you know, um, consolidated or whatnot. Some little rice and the sauce and all of the cans in the back. This one, I've shown it to you before. This is the flour and sugar, so you've seen that. The rice, quinoa, and lentil is here. I need to buy lentils and probably quinoa, and then I have some panko here that can stay in the front. And then these are the extras. This is where I keep my olive oil, and then I have a whole bunch of extra peeled tomatoes. I have some extra cornstarch here. And then over there is the extra rice. So when I have stuff that's left over and I can't fit in containers, it's gonna go in there and probably overlap with this one here. But let me pull back so you can see what it looks like. It's a totally different closet. Um, it definitely looks like a pantry now. Um, so yeah, that was not a huge effort on my part, but it was a good thing to do. Um, and you should do that regularly at your house as well. So there you have it. This was my pantry organization. You can tell this was actually a very small project. I think I did it under two hours. It was a good thing for me to do. It makes me feel much better. It really was something that has been bothering me for quite some time now. I just felt like the need to put a pantry together. So perhaps I'm gonna be a little bit more engaged in the kitchen and do something a little bit fancier for dinner once in a while. So now basically, I know what you're gonna think, that there's not a lot of food in there. I've seen pantries that are stocked from top to bottom with everything that you could possibly need in a kitchen and everything in between. This is basically years and years and years of having a household and I know what I need. I don't need a lot of things. The basic stuff like the sugar, the flour, the quinoa, the lentil, the couscous, the pasta, the sauces, the rice is really all I need. And everything else, if I have a recipe that calls for it, then I'll purchase it just for that recipe. I don't need to stock up on a lot of stuff. I mean, really, there's a lot of folks who stock up on canned vegetables, canned beans, things like this. I don't do that a lot. If there is a sales, like for instance, a shop right in our area here in New Jersey will do something they call the can can sale. When they have the beans that are for like, you know, a big can for 59 cents or things like this, yeah, then I would go and buy a whole bunch of cans and then I'll stock up. But I don't tend to put that stock up of cans or dry good here on the first floor where the kitchen is. I usually keep that in the stockpile downstairs and actually the stockpile, I'm not couponing as much as I used to, so the stockpile is actually getting smaller and smaller and smaller, which is not a bad thing because most of the time I found that as I was purchasing a lot of items just to have a stockpile, a lot of stuff just got bad, period. Like, I don't know, hamburger helpers that were a year and a half past due. I don't know if we can use them, but the bottom line is that they had to go. So that was the story about my pantry and why it looks kind of like um, minimized compared to most American household pantries. I really don't feel the need to have anything other than what you saw today. Aside from maybe refilling the things that I'm missing right now or I'm running low, 
a year from now, I can't imagine if I keep my pantry the way it is today, I really can't imagine needing any more space than what I have now. So I'm very happy I did this project. It was a good thing to do. And again, it didn't take that long. Now, if you have a bigger pantry, of course, it's going to take you longer. But mine was mostly cleaning, kind of relabeling and reassorting and kind of like putting things in a way together that made sense so that way I can have all of the flour and the sugar together because those containers are the same anyway. You get the point. Again this was Sophia from mygreatchallenge.blogspot.com. Check out my channel you guys. There's a lot of DIY projects, a lot of cleaning, organizing projects, some big projects, some small projects. There's some beauty going on on my channel as well so don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Subscribe if you're new and I will talk to you later. Bye!